As Burnside's corps finally got past Antietam Creek, they were headed straight for the town of Sharpsburg and the dangerously thin Confederate line that was stationed there to defend it. But unbeknownst to Burnside, A.P. Hill's light division managed to reach the battlefield in time to reinforce the Confederates. His leading brigade consisted of Gregg's blue-clad South Carolinians. The 12th South Carolina who was attached to Gregg's brigade was wearing an assortment of federal uniforms that they took from Harbor's Ferry, who then smashed into the flank of Burnside's corps and sent them running back to the creek. The 12th South Carolina was raised and organized outside of Columbia, South Carolina in July of 1861. The 12th was made up of some of the men who first answered the call for arms from the Confederate President Jefferson Davis after the bombardment of Fort Sumter that spring. The 12th was first sent to guard the coasts of South Carolina before being transferred to Virginia and was attached to a brigade full of South Carolina regiments under the command of Maxie Gregg of A.P. Hill's Light Division. They would first see combat at the Battle of Port Royal. During the Maryland Campaign, they would be led by Colonel Dixon Barnes and would be attached to Gregg's South Carolina Brigade that accompanied Hill as they siege Harper's Ferry and were left to process the 12,000 Union prisoners and procure new blue uniforms from the stores of supplies that was left by the Federal Garrison before heading to Antietam on the 17th. Once they reached the southern end of the battlefield, which was heating up thanks to Burnside's attack, the 12th was initially mistaken for federal reinforcements by the raw Union recruits on Burnside's left flank thanks to the blue uniforms. The 12th and their brigade smashed into Burnside's flank and sent them running back toward the creek, succeeding in saving Lee's right flank from collapsing but at the cost of losing Colonel Barnes to a mortal wound to the head. After their counterattack, the Battle of Antietam ended. Three days later, the 12th along with their division attacked a Federal reconnaissance in force and drove them back across the Potomac, ending the Maryland Campaign at the Battle of Shepherdstown and being one of the last regiments to spill blood during the campaign. The 12th is equipped with the M1853 Enfield and the M1861 Springfield rifles with their bayonets. Both rifles are exceptional at medium and long ranges with their 58 caliber Mene ball. The 12th was able to acquire the more advanced M1861 Springfield rifle from the Federal Armory at Harpers Ferry and would stand out from the comrades who still used the more old styled guns. Unlike the majority of Confederate units who wear something blue, the 12th South Carolina is the most federal looking unit for the South. They acquire their uniforms from Harpers Ferry after the siege and can almost pass as Federals themselves. The 12th can be seen sporting blue and brown jackets with gray and red shirts underneath. Their pants consist of blue, gray, and brown pants held up by belts that have an upside down US belt buckle. Their coverage range from blue, brown, and gray kepis to brown felt hats. The 12th South Carolina can be seen carrying two flags, their famous Palmetto flag and the Confederate battle flag. The Palmetto on the South Carolina flag is ringed with a Roman laurel wreath to symbolize victory and honor for the men of South Carolina over their federal foe. The Confederate battle flag is designed the same like the others but with a white border around it. In War of Rights, you can find the 12th South Carolina along with the Palmetto Sharpshooters attacking the Federal left flank on the southern part of the battlefield of Antietam. Now what will you do? Use your blue uniforms to confuse your Yankee enemy or stand your ground and refuse to be tricked. 